want to talk to you about prayer. There seems to be such a mystery around prayer. So many people do want to pray, but they're wondering, okay, is prayer effective? How do I pray? Are there any fundamentals? To me, prayer is not just a serious thing, it's fun. But you cannot have fun without fundamentals. And so in this series, I'm going to talk to you about the fundamentals of prayer to give you a broader understanding of how impactful prayer really is and why you should pray. In the book of Matthew 16 and 8, it talks about Jesus building the church upon a rock and the gates of hell not prevailing against it. How can we and just manifest that, you can manifest it through prayer, why? I call this a kingdom technology because the kingdom technology is a conglomeration of pragmatic or universal spiritual principles that are industry specific. It could be apostolic or prophetic or didactic or pastoral or evangelistic or medical or scientific, but it's something that God puts in our hands that we use to apply and to, in order to affect positive change in our world's marketplace, social structures, our institution, so that we not only participate in a global economy, but we also create additional channels and avenues for many things, for wealth creation and distribution or redistribution, for the acquisition and advancement of intellectual properties that enhance human development or productivity, or even the quality of life. It is used for the acquisition of real estate property, for globalization and the distrib distribution of a primary commodity, which is the message of the kingdom, the Christ message that empowers people to discover and live life on purpose, to maximize their potential, to live morally and ethically with meaning and dignity and hope. And this also means that as we use prayer, prayer is a technology that can increase the quality of life for all and to raise raise the level of consciousness that res have respect for the sanctity of life, which is the key to all human progress and sustainability. The moment we lose uh, the respect for the, the, the sanctity of life is the moment you will see our entire civilization shriveling up and dying. Prayer is the key. This is our technology. And when we use this technology, we're able to advance the message of hope and dignity for all all humanity until what Revelation 11 15 declares the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ this message is about human development and empowerment and the way that we can advance that is through prayer here's the principle whenever God wants to transfer wealth he does it through technology and our technology ladies and gentlemen is prayer and one of the most powerful technologies made available to every believer or even humanity is prayer and intercession. One of the things that I found out is that God shapes the world through prayer. The more prayer there is in the world, the better the world will be, the mighty the forces against evil. This is what E.M. Bounds said. It all starts with prayer. If we are going to see our nations turned around, God needs you praying. I believe that we don't know how powerful prayer is. Little did Abraham know that when he was praying, God's secret weapon would be birthed through intercession. But once God gets involved, once there is intercession that is involved in the game, we are able to see that prayer is a game changer. Nobody can count you out if God has counted you in. And through prayer, God will cause uh, the enemy to, to suffer either from amnesia or he will blind the enemy so that he does not abort the purposes that God not only has in your life, but your children's life and future generation. Prayer is heaven's technology. The second thing about prayer that I want you to know is prayer is a spiritual discipline. And I hope you're getting that prayer is a spiritual discipline. In the book of Luke chapter 11, verse one, the Bible said, and it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he had ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, 
teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. And he said unto them, when you pray, say, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done as it is in heaven, so in earth. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins, for we are also forgiven everyone that is indebted to us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Now, this is important. Teach us to pray. Prayer is a discipline. In order to learn how to pray, you got to pray. Teach us to pray. He said, when you pray, say. In the book of Luke chapter 11, it also goes on and says that, and I say unto you, ask and it shall be given, seek and ye shall find, knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asks receives, and he that seeketh findeth, and him that knocketh, it shall be opened unto you. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If you then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? Now, this is very important because if you are praying, God is not going to play games with you. He said, if you learn the art of prayer, I will answer your prayer. Just like a natural father won't give you a stone if you ask for bread or a snake if you ask for meat. When you begin to pray, you can pray with confidence in knowing that God answers prayer. This is why it is important that you have to learn how to pray. Prayer is a dif discipline. When you learn to pray, when you learn how to pray, it's like practicing, I guess, for the Olympics. Prayer is, is hard work. It's not easy. If it was easy, everybody would be praying. I agree uh, that uh, the vast majority of Christians uh, uh, want to know how to pray, but they don't. Because just like you're training for the Olympics, it takes discipline. Discipline. Anyone that wants wants to learn how to pray, has to be willing to make the necessary sacrifice. In the book of Romans chapter 12, verses one to two, it says that we should present our body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service and uh, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your mind is going to be transformed the moment you choose to make the sacrifice and sacrificing your body takes a discipline. And if you want to learn how to really persevere in prayer, one of the things that you have to do is to discipline yourself, learn the fundamentals. And then when you learn the fundamentals, you will begin to have fun. You cannot have fun without fundamentals. And you can transform the discipline of prayer from being a chore to being an exciting way of life. Now, there are so many analogies that I can give you to encourage you um, in the discipline of prayer. And these uh, are realistic and they're attainable. In general, everybody knows that if you are out of shape physically, you're going to have to go through a phase that is real and painful and is a struggle to get back in shape before you enjoy the benefits of a buff body, a refined body, a figure eight. And everyone knows that that is possible. But if you are overweight, you will struggle through a very difficult time of changing your eating habits, disciplining your appetites, losing the weight before you enjoy enjoy a transformed, strong, chiseled body and good health. Everybody knows that is possible. If your finances are in shambles and you want to uh, to endure the you, you you're going to have to endure the painful, dreary process of digging your way out of debt before you enjoy liberating uh, your your pocketbook and your wallet until you are able to owe no man nothing. Everybody knows that it's possible to live debt free. But most of us, we want powerful prayer available to us at three, no hassle credit card payments on a high interest spiritual plastic. Of course, we want overnight shipping available with no extra charge. And if you ever see that it's a scam, don't fall for it. Prayer is a discipline. 
And one of the things I want you to do, even if you are listening to this or watching me as I teach this message, I want to stop right now and let's pray together. Let's start right here and pray together and let's pray. Lord, help us just for today to determine to exercise our prayer muscles. Father, we ask you that we will have discipline and that as we exercise our prayer muscles today, you will give us the courage. You would give us the commitment. You would give us the strength to wake up tomorrow and to do it all over again. We ask you to help us every single day until prayer becomes a way of life. And so it, you might have sore spiritual muscles just for a little while, but as you trust God and as you discipline yourself in prayer, eventually God is going to bring you to a spiritual place of power. You are going to be able to live a fulfilled life and prayer is going to become an exciting way of life. Now, my sole reason for this and for teaching this is because I believe that God desires to bring you into a new realm of glory, a new realm of power, and a new realm of authority. And when you recognize that this is possible, you are going to be able to press into prayer. Now, just before we end this, I want you to think about this and contemplate and really ask yourself this question. Do I consistently live a life of prayer? Do I pray on a daily basis? If your answer is yes, congratulations. But if your answer is no, and you really want to learn how to pray and pray consistently, I want you to believe that there are no shortcuts, no tricks, no special skills needed to have a consistent prayer life. Uh, you know, you can do everything that you need to do in your prayer closet. Join Dr. Cindy Trim for these next live appearances. on God. In the United States of America, there is probably one of the most sophisticated documents called the Declaration of Independence. But in the kingdom, prayer is our declaration of dependence. We don't want to act as if we are independent of God. We want to depend on God, and God loves that. In the book of Psalm 25, verses 1 to 6, here's David praying, Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. Oh my God, I trust in thee. Let not my enemies uh, triumph over me. Yea, let not they that wait on thee be ashamed. Let them be ashamed which transgress without a cause. Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Lead me in the truth and teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. Remember, O Lord, thy tender mercy and thy loving kindness, for they have been ever old. In the book of Psalm 65 verse 2 it says, O oh, thou that hearest prayer, unto thee shall all flesh come. And so when you pray, your prayer is your declaration of independence. My next point is this, prayer is legislative power. It is given to the kings of the earth. In the book of Revelation chapter 1 verses 4 to 6 it says, John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come from the seven spirits which are before his throne and from Jesus Christ who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins and our own blood and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever you bound on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again I say unto you, here's the scripture, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done of my Father which is in heaven. For where but two or three gather together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. This is exciting news because a king legislates. 
And this is where you get your kingly authority, your kingly power so that you can decree and you can declare. When you pray, you are able to rise up into the realm of authority authority, that place where you are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus and you are able to legislate. Now, prayer is an expansion of supernatural power. The book of Luke chapter 11 verse 1 to 2 says, and it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of the disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. And he said to them, when you pray, pray Say, when you pray, say, when you pray, say, say. This is important because a word is a spiritual force. It is energy. It is a container of thoughts, intentions, and meaning. Jesus himself said that the words that I speak are spirit and they are life. It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. This is what the Bible says. Proverbs 18, 20 to 21 says that a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Death and life is in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. When you pray, prayer works wonders or they will create blunders, either one or the other. Use your words as a prayer weapon. This is what happened. The Bible said on the day of Pentecost, the disciples prayed and the power of God fell. When you are prayerless, you forego access to the power of God that your words are able to shape your world. You've got to understand your words are driven by power and you can attain to a place where you have prayer power just by constantly understanding the power of the spoken word. Now, my next point is this. Prayer is heaven's elixir for troubled souls. Wow. That means that you can find solutions for your soul. The Bible said, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? There's one thing for God to have control over your spirit, but who has or what has control over your soul? And in prayer, your soul can be restored. Prayer is pure miracle working power. In the book of Acts, there is an account of Paul visiting a region. And the Bible said in the same quarters were possessions of the chief man of the island whose name was Publius, who received us and lodged us three days courteously. And it came to pass that the father of Publius lay sick of the fever and of a bloody flux to whom Paul entered in and prayed and laid his hands on him and healed him. So when this was done, others also which had diseases in the island came and were healed. Prayer is pure miracle working power. It releases the power of God, not only over your life, but also in your family, in your home, in your community. And I tell you, if there's ever a time that we need miracles, we need miracles now. We need emotional miracles. We need financial miracles. We need miracles in our children. We need government to have a miracle as well. And I'm decreeing and declaring that as you pray, as you find your place of prayer, I decree and declare the miracle working power will permeate your home, your community, your government. You will have miracles in your finances. I decree that you will have uncommon miracles as you pray. The next thing that I know about prayer and I've learned about prayer is this, that prayer is the turning of the human soul to a living God, not a dead God, a living God. Psalm 25 and 1 says, unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. You are lifting up your soul to a living God. Prayer is an invitation to myspace.com from God. I just love that. God always RSVPs. He's never late for a date and he never misses an appointment. The Bible said, and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. God amongst the trees of the garden and the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, where art thou? And he said, 
I heard the voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, who told thee that thou was naked? Has thou eaten of the tree of the knowledge of the good and evil or the tree wherefore I commended thee that thou should not eat? How, I mean, you know, when, when, when God asked Adam, um, where art thou? It's not that he didn't know uh, where Adam was. He just wanted to know if Adam himself knew who he was. And this is a story that is told from out of the book of Genesis chapter two. You can read it. Many times we don't understand that when we pray, God is going to show up. He's not going to be late. The thing is, are you going to be in that place of prayer? Meet God in, in, in his space. It's an invitation to myspace.com from God. Prayer allows you FaceTime with God. Everybody knows about FaceTime, and I love this. Prayer is a two-way communication with God and man. And when you talk to God, God wants to have an intimate conversation with you, and he wants to give you information from his perspective. He is your heavenly father, but he's my heavenly father too. And both you and I are able to have an intimate conversation with God. Jesus said, when you pray, pray our father. It's not just your pastor's father. It's not just your priest's father. It's not just the a missionary's father. It is our father. Whether you are new in the Christian faith, whether you're a teenager, whether you just got saved yesterday or today, God is your heavenly father and he wants to have an intimate conversation with you. Prayer is communion with God. It's not just a conversation, it's communion. Prayer means that I am to be raised up into feeling, into union and design with God himself, that you, you and I can enter into the counsel of God and so that we can carry out his purpose fully. Prayer is not a soliloquy, like I said, it's a dialogue. It's not introspective alone, but it's looking towards the hills from whence cometh your help. This is what Moody said, 1998 to 2004. He said, you are looking unto God, looking unto the hills from whence cometh your help. In the book of Genesis chapter 17 and one, the Bible said, and when Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the almighty God, walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make a covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. I mean, what an intimate conversation. It is not just you talking to God, but God wants to talk back to you. Prayer. Prayer is a sincere heart study under heaven's microscope. I, I figured that some of you that are in medicine would love this because it is a divine and supernatural instructional exercise where God looks at your heart under his own microscope and gives you an uh, ability to look at your own heart. You have the ability to learn uh, what it means to live with sincerity and honesty and authenticity. You can understand what is going on in your heart and give uh, God an, uh, an opportunity to give you a heart transplant. Uh, David was able to say, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. And God wants to give you instructions. And that's what prayer gives. It gives in, 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 in you the ability to receive in, an instructional exercise of superb learning and supreme sincerity between heaven and earth, between God and man. Through prayer, we learn truth and information about ourselves, which we cannot find in any, through any other source or any other means of exploration. And the thing about it is this, in prayer, we disrobe ourselves of all artificiality, superficiality, falsehood, pretense. We could take our mask off and we could just let it all hang out. Why? Because God already knows everything about you. And you can have an intimate conversation and God will not under any means just reject you because of what he discovers in your heart. God, according to Psalm 44 verse 21, knows the secret of your heart. So you might as well have a conversation with the God that knows the secrets of your heart. Know for certainty that prayer 
doesn't change just some things. It changes everything. You are a change agent. And why don't you find that place of prayer so that you can find your place of power. Don't forget now, it may take you many, many days of being in heaven's gym, but when you come out, you're gonna come out with strong prayer muscles. Build up your prayer muscles. The world needs it, your family needs it. And most importantly, you could change this world when you begin to pray. The power to take on life's greatest challenges, the freedom to experience the abundant life, the joy to empower you to your purpose. Everything you need to discover true success and personal fulfillment begins with prayer. Instead of being a chore, Dr. Cindy Trim wants to lead you into a life of prayer that is productive, exciting, and even fun. In her brand new book, Till Heaven Invades Earth, she reveals the power of every believer to bring about spiritual change in our physical world through prayer. What Dr. Trim has taught us is to pray the word. God has to honor his word. My life has changed because every prayer that comes out of my mouth. In her powerful direct style, Dr. Cindy gives you practical insights into the importance and impact of intercessory prayer for your life and the lives of those you love. Don't allow the devil to run free in your life. Discover God's best for you and your loved ones when you learn to pray till heaven invades earth. As part of this special offer, when you call today, you'll also receive Dr. Cindy's latest personal development series, The Power of Prayer. You'll be inspired to seek God like never before as she guides you to pray and get results. Starting with the productive power of prayer, where you'll learn how to tap into the peace, restoration, and healing you need for your life. Moving on to the power of intercession, Dr. Cindy will show you how to apply those same principles for your loved ones, your city, and even entire countries. I want you to understand this, that prayer is a place of power. Prayer can change everything. Prayer just does not change some things. It changes every single thing. This all new collection, including Till Heaven Invades Earth and the two disc series, The Power of Prayer, is available today for your gift of $35. Access the authority and dominion that are your divine birthright as a child of God when you release the power of prayer in your life. Shut the door on the devil and experience God's best for you and your loved ones. You are just one prayer away from the life you've always wanted. Call now and take your first step toward the power, freedom, and joy you need to live maximized and fulfilled.